get your girl Adiola Okweo. Gambia is officially free from His Excellency Sheikh Professor Alhaji Dr. Yaya Abdul Aziz Awal Jemos Jejong Jame Nasiruddin Babili Mansa. Yes, so. <laughs> Not believe it is finally over. Eh? Me and Khalidu will not be small matter. We could not sleep. The story kept changing every minute, every day. We said, Father, what are we going to say? I'm telling you, there was nothing they did not offer this man. You know, just to get him to honor his words and step down for the new president. He kept playing games. So, oh, I want a new election. And then he submitted a petition. Thank God that judges did not show up. Kudos to that Chief Justice, by the way. I heard that is a Nigerian man. My father in the Lord. Hey, <laughs> you are blessed. So the new president had to stay in Senegal because of this arrogant man that did not want to let go of power. I was so sad when I heard that the new president's son, one of Barrow's children in Gambia, was bitten by a dog and actually died. You know, I was so heartbroken. And then they buried this son in his absence, all because of Yaya Jamin. How wicked can you be that he couldn't even guarantee a man's safety for him to go and bury his seven-year-old son? Have that? People were moving out of Gambia in drones. More than 45,000 people fled. Come and see tourists at the airport trying to get out of Gambia. Gambia. Because of Yaya Jamin, even as ECOWAS forces approached Gambia, Jamin was still adamant. You know, for a minute, I thought the man wanted to die. Was it just me? Did you not think he wanted to die? His ministers were resigning left and right. His personal lawyer fled. Even the vice president resigned. Haba, Jamin was still holding on to power. In fact, Kaledowo sent me a video. He said, you know, this is what is going to happen to Jamin. He's going to sabotage himself. Can be very costly. Let me see it one more time. <laughs> Did he just do that? Like seriously, who does that? So they had to swear in the new president in Senegal. Can you imagine? Oh, yeah, do swear. Do you swear. I will well and truly. I will and truly. Execute the functions of the office. Execute the functions of the office. Okay. Thank you. Swearing in though, Jamin asked for extra time from ECOWAS and ECOWAS agreed. He said, Okay, by 12 p.m. tomorrow, you know, everybody was happy that okay, he would leave. Only for him to announce on national TV that night that he just fired the remainder of his cabinet. <laughs> I was like, Hey, I ain't share my I bet it trusted that. And uh, what is doing him? I ain't share. How do you say that? Okay, they are, they are following him from his village. Yes, somebody must be following him from his village. I was dumbfounded, like, What the heck? You are no longer the president. You are not in position to fire anybody. <laughs> so the deadline ECOWAS gave him 12 o'clock came. Jermaine said they should give him another deadline, 4 p.m. I said, ah, call it away, call it away. This man is doing some transactions, some money transfer. He's wiring money out of Gambia. You know, call it away did not believe me. 4 o'clock came. They were still begging this man. I said, why? But to, but to, why? Eh? Meanwhile, the army chief was telling everybody that even if Jame refuses to honor the 4 o'clock deadline, that him and his soldiers would not fight the ECOWAS forces. Nobody is going to fight. Why should we fight? For a reason. Let everybody tell me. This is a political misunderstanding. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ojare. The man is very smart. But again, when you remember that Gambia only has 2,500 soldiers, you can understand where he's coming from. <laughs> you can understand where he's coming from. ECOWAS sent about 7,000 soldiers. So you know they cannot win that battle. I don't blame him. I don't know if the man actually cares about democracy in Gambia or he's trying to survive, which is why he offered to drink tea with the ECOWAS forces instead. Even if they come, we are going to welcome them with a cup of tea and they place their weapons there and we enjoy the smiling coast of Africa, honestly. <laughs> anyway, but at last, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Jermaine finally listened to the voice of Allah and agreed to step down. Hey! Hey! You know, I was tossed by the old thing, I was tossed. He, he touched me. Yeah, he touched, he touched me. You know? Thank you, my brother. <laughs> he, tossed, he tossed me too. He tossed every one of us. I said, shoo, Jamin. So you were going to step down with all this shakara. Ah, for that. The devil is a liar. You need to see how happy I was when I saw his plane leaving. I said, what a relief. Uh. I said, good riddance, you know. But 
But you know what makes me really, really happy? The fact that no blood was shed in the Gambia. Hello, hello, somebody. That makes me so, ah, so happy that no innocent person had to die because of this momo, because of this stupid man. No innocent person had to die. Those who left the country are already coming back. Thank God for that. It's now a new day in the Gambia. The new president is back in his country and he has even named his vice president and it's a woman. Amen, somebody. Amen. The former vice president was also a woman, by the way, but mm, amen. I was like, yes. So I was jubilating left and right until the news hit me. I could not believe when I heard that Yaya Jame robbed Gambia when he left. <laughs> 11 million dollars. The master 11 million dollars when he was living. I said, Chai, you know, I told you that the man was wiring money. I told you the man was trans. You did not believe me. See your life. See, you, you see, I knew it. When he was like 12, 4, I said, ah, he's waiting for some money transfer. You see, I knew something was smelling. <sighs> did you put up his photo? I didn't tell you to put up. Take it down. I knew something was smelling. Okay, put it up. The man is a thief, a confirmed thief. Despite the fact that he walks around with Quran and Tesuba, always wearing white and always talking about the almighty Allah. Hey, he is a thief. Let this be a lesson for us, my people, that so many people are using religion to cover up their evil doings. Bene. By the way, was anybody else confused when the new president came out and said, oh, yeah, yeah, Jamin did not steal money. We were like, um, Mr. President, you were the one that told us that he stole money. Now you are saying he did not steal money. You can't be telling us that he stole money and then come again the following day and say he did not steal money. Which one is which, my brother? You must have one story. Just imagine how much that man must have stolen for the last one in two years that he's been president if he will steal 11 million dollars within like two weeks from the people of Gambia. Who do we believe? He tried to steal 13 luxurious cars. Thank God the whole thing did not fit in his plane. So he left some of them and the new president has ordered that nobody should be allowed to come and take these cars. 13 luxurious cars that belong to the country. As in who does that? And can you believe where he moved to? Equatorial Guinea. The home of the longest serving African president. Theodore Obiang. You know Theodore Obiang of Equatorial Guinea and Jose Eduardo of Angola. Both of them became presidents in 1979, 38 years ago. In two years, it will be 40 years that they've been president. Eh? The man and his family have stolen billions of dollars that belong to the people. They live in opulence while the people live in poverty. I've talked about this on my show before and I've talked about his son. You know Oh, the one with the palm. Mm. For the very sad, grown man with a palm on his head. He's wanted in France for laundering millions of dollars. He spends it on sports cars, on mansions abroad. He has this 78 million pound yacht. Just imagine. He bought Michael Jackson's glove for like $482,000. Isn't it interesting that Jamin would go and take refuge in a country where the president has refused to live for 38 years? I know that Nigeria offered him asylum. Mauritania offered him asylum. Several countries invited Jamin main to come but he decided to go to Equatorial Guinea. You know birds of the same feather my people they get along real well. No be so. I hope that they arrest Jamei someday because the man is a criminal and they need to force him to return all the money and the car stolen. Just imagine the new president doesn't have a ride. How bad? He basically bankrupted Gambia. Meanwhile I like to salute the Gambian people you know at home and abroad for not giving up. Y'all made me so proud. I am so proud of all of you. <laughs> and kudos to all the journalists that were reporting the development. Live and direct. Just like call it all. I'm sure that many of you did not sleep. <laughs> I just want to thank you. Thank you very much. Finally, uh, Mr. Adam Abaru, <laughs> you are welcome to this program. <laughs> uh, my name is Adio Lafa. <laughs> I'm your girl. Um, you know, your business is my business. I keep my eyes on African presidents. You know, <laughs> I have no favorites. I just say it as it is. Uh, so you are welcome to my Plasma TV. From today, I am watching you on Plasma TV. As you know, a lot is expected of you. Please do not disappoint your girl. Like seriously, you you cannot disappoint. After all that we've done, after all the fights that me and Colin, you cannot go and disappoint us. Congratulations again, but uh, I'm watching you, you, my dear. Are you ready to go to Zagambia? Woohoo! Zagambia! Zagambia! Hey, hey! Guess what? I'm just giving it true. And now that Jame is gone, praise him, the world needs to know about the atrocities that another dictator is committing in Cameroon. <laughs> where do I, I don't even know where to start. But you guys need to know that President Pobia is allegedly presently killing protesters and activists right now in Southern Cameroon. He has shut down the internet in Southern Cameroon so that no one can publish pictures and videos. He also shut down a popular radio station because that radio station held an on-air debate on the ongoing strike, which I'll talk about later. And 
you may be wondering why the sudden clamp down on media or why is he trying to prevent us from knowing what is going on well i told you guys in december that the people of southern cameroon have been protesting they've been protesting now for months remember how soldiers were beating university students in buya university that is in southern part of cameroon well besides protesting what's going on on their campus at that time these people have been protesting being marginalized since 1961 when they became part of northern cameroon as you guys know northern cameroon was colonized by france so they speak french southern cameroon was colonized by britain so they speak english although if you look at the map it's actually like southwest and it's very close to nigeria so it borders nigeria so when african countries were getting their independence at that time they refused to allow southern cameroon to stand as a country by itself you're too small to be a country you can either join nigeria or join the republic du cameroon which is french so southern cameroon decided to be part of cameroon because they used to be one before colonization you guys know that colonial masters just drew a map and divided africa among themselves they basically colonized everybody except ethiopia although they tried ethiopians kicked them out and liberia was also never colonized so they joined cameroon but they demanded that the constitution be amended to allocate them to accommodate them without marginalizing them they had a written agreement that cameroon would be a federal state a two-state federation the agreement was that the south would be allowed to manage its own natural resources and run their own system without any interference from the french speaking part of the country they wanted their own autonomy they speak english so they practice the english common law unfortunately the government brushed aside all the demands tabled by the southern cameroon delegation in fact few years after they signed that agreement the president at that time dissolved the federation without a referendum he didn't even consult southern cameroon and when paul bia became president he actually made it worse it's like france is now recolonizing southern cameroon i said france because as you guys must have observed almost all former french colonies in africa till today are still practically being controlled by france and most of the former french colonies till today are not stable i mean look at central african republic look at burundi look at mali chad niger i know that a lot of cameroonians like to deceive themselves by saying that cameroon is peaceful but you need to see the agreement that they signed with france which is still in operation till today some people are saying that it has been amended i'm yet to see the new copy this is the copy that i saw that france still determines the political economic and social cultural choices of cameroon that is just wrong that tells me that pobia is just a puppet in the hands of france which is why he spends more time there on vacation than in his own country france still manages cameroon's currency that is central african franc franc by the way is what they used to spend in france before they switched to euro but cameroon is still spending franc they call it central african franc france still determines the school curriculum in cameroon at all levels that is just wrong that the curriculum in cameroon is coming from france can you imagine do you know that 100 percent of cameroon's foreign exchange reserve is kept in france in fact they put it in their public treasury they call it operations account cameroon still pays taxes to france heck no and part of the agreement is that the strategic raw materials of cameroon till today have to be exploited by france in priority it is only if france is not interested that cameroon can now find another partner or exploit it themselves so so imagine that they cannot exploit their own natural resources not only that france is willing to send military backup in case of any external aggression or internal rebellion i mean how did they know that the people would rebel against the puppet really of course people are tired of not only france but 34 years under paul bia hello i don't blame them the ridiculous thing is that they sent french-speaking teachers to go and be teaching students in the anglophone region of cameroon imagine your teacher up there saying bonjour uh come on safe and you like um say what um I mean we're not communicating it's so bad that they are sending them french judges who have no understanding of the english common law they use civil law in france like how is that gonna work also when you finish school if you don't speak french in cameroon it's so hard to get a job when you finish writing you have a good grade but you're unable to have be in the big position which i always dreamt of for over 50 years anglophone children have not been able to have a headway in cameroon in those disciplines that will bring about development science and technology because the government had refused to train teachers for our schools thank you my brother i mean just imagine so they've been protesting for two months lawyers and teachers have been on strike protesting and as usual bia is arresting people <laughs> Protesters in the country's Anglophone region say they're sick of the French language dominating their lives. 
Violent clashes have erupted in Bermenda as police and demonstrators go head to head. Anglo police should be given the right to manage their own affairs. There have never been a minister of finance from Anglo There have never been a president from Anglo If that bill were to be adopted by the upper house, we are going to resort to plan B. Are we clear? Yes! This Anglophone lawyer has just been physically assaulted by the security forces. Look, look, the senior colleague is terrible. Me fully. By the way, that was a lawyer that they just manhandled. I mean, what do you think they would do to regular people if they are doing that to a lawyer? You know, I would never understand some African policemen and soldiers. That mentality of harassing your own people, killing your own people because of a dictator, it still, it baffles me. I don't get it. Bia allocates more money for his own birth region, the region where he came from, than the whole of the Anglophone part of the country. Can you believe, because of lack of resources, that there are schools where two teachers are teaching at the same time in the same classroom. So if we talk about God, therefore God exists. Yes. So when you look at the time, you can look at the same time. What was that? What did I just watch? Hey! I beg, play it one more time. He is supposed to wear the exit. If you want to talk about it, it tends to be more than a million and that's what they do. Have you ever seen anything? Have you ever seen anything like that? Apparently, Kalido War is familiar with that kind of teaching. Ladies and gentlemen, enough is enough for the all of Cameroon. Bia has got to go. You know, just like Yaya, AJJ, Jame, Babili, Mansa. <laughs> and um, for Southern Cameroon, they need to stop marginalizing these people. And I like to say to protesters, please don't be violent. Because I've seen a video where a boy was going to school and English speakers were beating this boy because he didn't join the strike. I've also seen where English protesters were disrupting a school because the school did not join in the strike. Actually students, Congolese students from other schools have been sent home forcefully by the youth here in Linde. <laughs> Some of the students and teachers are in shock. There is no need to be violent, please. But you know the most important thing is, when would the French-speaking part of Cameroon join the protest? You cannot ignore that this is happening in your country, even if you speak French. This is happening in your country. You are in the same country and this is happening and you're not saying anything. And even if you are not interested in fighting for Southern Cameroon today, you should at least fight for your own freedom. Isn't 34 years under Bia enough? If you let him do this to Southern Cameroon, when he's done with them, where do you think he's coming to? He would come to Northern Cameroon. Once a dictator, always a dictator. He would never want to leave. I'm just saying. And Cameroonians in France also need to put pressure on the France government until they let Cameroon be. We need awareness. French people need to know the atrocities that their government is committing in Africa. And it's not like I'm blaming everything on France. Majority of the blame has to do with us Africans. True freedom will not come from France. You know, we can't really put all the blame on France. Direct colonization has ended decades a goal. So we need to stand up and fight for our rights. We need to stand up and do the right thing. If we don't, then we can't really blame France. Huge kudos to all the Cameroonians abroad that have joined the protests in Canada, in the US, in UK, different parts of the world. You know, I was not surprised when I saw Cameroonians in London who marched to France embassy to give them a petition. The petition was basically saying they need to call their puppet, you know, <laughs> Paul Bia to order. And um, the embassy refused to collect the petition. We are not leaving this place if they then receive our petition. Now, yes, they give us an acknowledgement that they received that petition. We are not living here. Just imagine, imagine, is anyone surprised? Because I'm not, I'm not surprised. We reject you here, we renounce you here, we have nothing to do with you. You need to know what these people are going through so you can feel their pains. But English and French part of Cameroon can live together just like they do in Canada. I mean, Canada has French speaking regions and English speaking regions and they live in peace. Either Bia wants it or not, it's time for him to leave. He needs to leave along with all his corrupt ministers. It's time to kick him out, you know, just like Yaya Jame of Gambia. Do I get a name, eh? Hey. Hey man. hey man, somebody! You guys not doing anything. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So last week in Nigeria, the military accidentally blew up a refugee camp in Bono. <laughs> hey, 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 I'm telling you, Oroburuku as in, where, where do I even start? How can you accidentally blow up a refugee camp as in, in your own country? Oh, it's not even like they sent you to one country to do the job and then you messed up. How can you mess up in your own country? As in, has anybody ever heard of something like that? Only in 
Nigeria. Oh, me in Nigeria. Is there anything that I will not hear from Nigeria, my Nigeria? Accidentally, three times. Three different explosions. Killing more than 100 people. Injuring more than 200 people. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm tired, honestly. I'm, I mean, I'm tired. People say, Adiola, you don't talk about good things from Nigeria. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you say about this? Eh? There were so many doctors that died in that explosion, including doctors that came from outside Nigeria to volunteer to help to treat the internally displaced people. I, I, I mean, Nigeria, you don't tire me. And then a few days after, Buhari said that he was going to London for vacation. <laughs> okay, so so him going for vacation is not even the problem. You know, uh, he can go for vacation now. But, you know, <laughs> the fact that they added that while on vacation, he will be doing medical checkup. I said, oh. So not only can we not treat ear infection in Nigeria, but now we cannot do common checkup. Come out there. You still see my life? I said this is an insult on all the medical practitioners in Nigeria. A country of 180 million people. We cannot do check-up. We cannot do check-up in Nigeria. Ah, father, is that what you are telling me? Bah, me I've been seeing you on television defending what is that what you are trying to tell me? That we cannot do check -up? Ah, father, you see, you see my shame. Take away my shame. And if you don't trust Nigerian doctors, as some people have been saying, that maybe they will kill him. I said, hey, why can't can't you bring your doctor to Nigeria? Wherever the doctor go, bring him from London. Bring him to Nigeria so he can treat you in Nigeria. I said, what is the point of spending billions of Naira on the state house clinic if they cannot do common checkup? Uh -uh. As in, come on, check up. As far as I'm concerned, the vacation is just a cover up. If you are not well, let us know. Let us know. If you need check up, do it before you go on vacation. And then we will know that you are truly on vacation. Who does check up during vacation? I have never even heard of that. If I'm going for vacation, I'm going for vacation. If I'm going to the hospital, I'm going to the hospital. I don't do both at the same time. Ha -ha. These people, they tire me. But you know, back to the IDPs. I cannot imagine what these people are going through. You know, even before the explosion, I mean the accidental explosion, <laughs> people have been starving. People have been dying, like literally, especially children. Can you believe how many children? I mean, just, when I saw this, I was like, why? There are reports that foodstuffs are being rebagged, repackaged, and sold outside the camp. So, these people are donating food, but it looks like some people are taking that food to go and sell it instead of feeding people. Why? So why? So last year, someone sent me this video of the IDPs protesting due to hunger. <laughs> We lose a lot of things, like toilet. A woman like this will go to bush to the first get there. I just found myself in the fire. My body really, really hurts. Feeling pains. For our village, they are born everything. Yeah, just imagine. You know, I, when I saw that, I was so sad. I was so heartbroken. In fact, I heard that some young girls are prostituting themselves at these IDP camps in order to buy food. Having seen all that, Kawa Foundation, that is keeping it real with Adeola Foundation, we decided to partner with Rehoboth Foundation in Texas, as well as adopt a camp foundation in Nigeria. That foundation has been working with IDPs in Bono for a long time. So the soul of the partnership is to get food to the IDPs. So we are trying to send them containers of Vita Meal. Vita Meal is actually very common. It's manufactured specifically for malnourished children and adults in disaster areas in order to help them regain their nutrients. You would see pictures of people distributing Vita Meals in various parts of the world where there are disasters. Vita Meal is halal friendly. It's purely vegetarian. It's very rich in nutrients. It's non-dairy and it allows for easy addition of ingredients in order to fit every taste and culture. If people want to add their own ingredients in order to fit into their culture, they can totally do that. It comes in flavors. Sometimes you would see rice and lentil, that's like rice and beans, and sometimes you would see roasted maize and soya beans porridge. We've been able to secure NAFDAQ approval for this meal. They've asked for sample. They have the sample in Nigeria. When you have time, you can check out the full Vital Meal Nutritional Fact on the internet. Thanks 
Thanks to Rehoboth Foundation, we've secured the food and our goal is to feed more than 900,000 people in a year. Because it's not just a one-time thing. We want to be sending food, containers of food every month. It's already loaded. I'm trying to raise about $10,000 so that we can ship at least one container of food to Nigeria. Not just to get the container from Utah to Texas where it will be shipped to Nigeria but also for clearance and also getting it to Bono and also Adamawa IDP camps. So please, if anyone has ever enjoyed this show, please, I'm begging you to partner with us. Nothing is too small. People are dying, literally. And it's not just in Bono or Adamawa. With the recent killings in Southern Kaduna, there are so many people that have been displaced in Nigeria. Please, we're trying to help. And you know, it's not just food that we're trying to send. We're trying to send basic amenities, you know, like toothbrush, like soap, like pads for ladies, like clothes, like toothpaste, you know, just basic things, please. So I set up a GoFundMe account, please, if you can donate, it would be greatly appreciated. All the money is going towards this course. And you can also donate on our website, Kawa Foundation's website. And if we raise more than $10,000, that means we can send more containers of food. It is very urgent. We can only send the food when we get the money. And I'm begging you to please be a part of this course for change. Nothing is too small. You guys know I don't know anything. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Growing up in Kenya, my sister and I were very close. But like any sisters, we fought a lot. She always got new clothes and I always got hand-me-downs. Now she's putting her children through school in Kenya. We still fight sometimes, especially when I send money for the kids. I tell her, buy some clothes for the younger one, and we both laugh. With nearly 500,000 locations, our app and online, this is moving money for better. All right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Until next week, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out.